Welcome and thank you for joining us for our webinar, What You'll Wish You'd Known About Your JDE Upgrade, a three-part webinar series. Today's speaker is Glenn Wyrick. Glenn has worked with JD Edwards Software for over 14 years. Working for JD Edwards, IBM, and the MASIC Group, he has been involved in JD Edwards implementations and upgrades for both medium and large clients. He is now in charge of product management at InsightSoftware.com. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Glenn. Thanks, Heather. The first part of this webinar series is focused around what users really need from a reporting solution. And we'll be talking about why this particular topic is so critical to a successful go live. So let's talk about some of the problems. First of all, how do you ensure a successful upgrade? Well, according to CIO.com and research they did over hundreds and hundreds of upgraded clients, ERP upgrades have only a 7% chance of coming in on time, on budget, and providing satisfying results, meaning that the other 93 are in some way a failed or challenge project. That's a pretty astounding statistic. Now, there's a lot of reasons, of course, that projects can fail. Today's focus is the importance of reporting for a successful go-live. Now, according to experts, including OAUG, who recently published a survey on enterprise upgrades and implementations, two key reasons that projects indeed fail are poor user adoption and unhappy users caused by an inability to get information after go live. So as we think about this, I want you to picture your upgrade. First, I want you to picture that you've done a lot of the right things. And I want you to picture that you're going live on budget, on schedule, You've made very smart choices with your users around how the system is configured. But now I want you to consider scenario A versus B. In scenario A, everything I just said is true. However, the reporting solution does not support the business user's need to get information the way they need it to run the business. In scenario B, everything I said was true, but your business users are able to get the information they need in a meaningful way immediately after go live. If you think of it in those terms, I think you can see how you could do everything right in the project and still have the impression of the business be that the project doesn't meet the need. And that's why today's focus is on reporting itself. So let's talk about the hamster wheel. Any of us that have been in the industry for a long time have probably experienced this cycle. So let's talk about getting off of the hamster wheel. For any of us that have been in this industry very long, you've probably all experienced some flavor of this. It starts with IT identifying a new reporting or business intelligence tool, possibly as part of the upgrade, possibly separate. But at any rate, the solution is rolled out to the users. Then end users begin to complain that they have to wait for reports from IT. Maybe they complain that they can't actually answer all the questions, which means they're calling up IT to help them get answers out of the system. Because IT has higher value initiatives that they must deliver to the organization, they often then don't have time to keep up with the users' needs around reporting. Eventually, the problem escalates to the point where the company says, you know, we need a better reporting solution and you return back to the starting point, item number one, and on it goes. So of course what we would all want at the end of our upgrade is for the business users to say it's a successful upgrade and indeed we can answer our business questions, there is no more hamster wheel. So what do best in class companies do to ensure that end users are truly satisfied? This comes from a recent white paper from Aberdeen Group. I would highly recommend it. It's called Agile or Fragile. Google that and you'll, I'm sure you'll find it. It talks a lot about what many, many large companies are doing wrong and right around getting the reporting answer satisfied for their users. So the first quote from them is that best-in-class organizations are 65% more likely to enable users to tailor reports to suit their own needs. So basically, end-user tools, end-user reporting that doesn't require IT to be involved. Now, before we move on, I want to throw a concept at you. I want you to think about the difference of a roadmap using an old paper roadmap versus GPS. So picture back to a road trip you might have taken years ago before there was GPS. Picture that folding map. Picture that it might be a bit cumbersome to find the right map in the glove box. Unfold the map pull off to the side of the road. It might be a bit confusing to figure out the roads. Could be error prone, the whole process, especially if it's night, maybe it's raining, maybe you can't see street signs. And if nothing else, it's definitely a slow way to get the information. Now fast forward to today, 
And I would say most of us probably don't use paper maps anymore. We use GPS. GPS is quick. It goes live immediately. doesn't require any training at all or very, very little. It's simple. It's accurate. It's effective. And very important, what GPS does is it takes an otherwise complex problem and makes it very, very simple for the user. So why are we talking about roadmaps and GPS? Hold that thought, and we'll, we'll come back to that later. So now let's continue with the thought process around what users really need. And again, I'm leveraging that white paper by the Aberdeen Group. Uh, but frankly, these six points that I'm about to discuss also come from the experience of the many years that our product and our company has been involved in these types of upgrades and reporting solutions. So first of all, according to Aberdeen, a key capability that really empowers your users is very simple and complete drill down. And one thing they highlight, the definition of complete, is that you can get from the highest level summarized and consolidated reports down to the lowest level of supporting detail, as well as being able to very quickly and easily drill across the data, maybe looking at a balance sheet in one moment and linking to the related fixed asset report and then linking very easily to the supporting purchasing transactions that purchase that asset. Next is a very important point. This starts to um, highlight the GPS concept. Supply sophisticated combinations of information. Provide them in a very seemingly simple form for the business user. Next, we need to ensure that individual users are able to customize exactly what they see. Because no matter how well thought out a report or a view of information is, invariably, the end user needs to change it to answer the questions of the moment. This leads right on to the next point of the need to provide easy access to the exact information required. Partial information still leaves the business user wanting and still wastes time and causes inefficiencies. Then a big point that's made in this white paper, as well as several others that I've read, is that we want to minimize the number of reporting products that any given user has to use. Ideally, we want to provide users just one single reporting solution. Now, it's a bit utopian to assume that at a large enterprise, you can get by with only one reporting solution. But there are many case studies today where businesses are able to deliver a single reporting solution that satisfies the vast majority of reporting requirements. And for many of the types of users, the day in and day out business users, they can indeed get the answers out of just one system. The final point involves a trend that's been occurring in our industry for several years where business users more and more are taking the lead in driving reporting solutions. And in, in fact, Aberdeen Group does say that best of breed companies take this approach. Going back a couple of decades, IT almost always made these kinds of decisions. Nowadays, letting the business users be involved in that decision making process is a key to making sure you deliver the right product back to them. So let's take a look now. I've talked quite a bit in concept about meaningful answers, total empowerment, what business users really need. So I'd like to show you some examples. And what we're going to focus on is, first of all, that users get easy access to the exact information required. We'll see what that looks like. We'll also be looking at the concepts of minimizing the number of reporting products to get the meaningful answer, as well as users being able to customize what they see. So as I switch to this first example, I also want to bring you back to the concept of a paper map versus a GPS. So this first screen that we're looking at is just a listing of purchase order details. It's a transactional report. This screen is extremely similar to what you would see in JD Edwards. And in fact, what we're looking at here is live JD Edwards data in a transactional form where I have a giant listing of purchase order reports. Now this is very much like a paper map. I'm having to troll through a lot of information to try and get meaningful answers out. So let's say, for example, the exact business question I have is, I want to know the average price that I'm paying for any given item by supplier. And I'd also like to know which suppliers are charging me more than my average and less than my average. Now in this paper map version, that's a very difficult answer to find. In fact, I'm willing to give anyone on this call a free gift certificate to Starbucks if you can look here and tell me the average price that we're paying for part number 33030. Obviously an impossible task. So let's make it a little easier. For, first of all, I'm just going to hit the make it easier for the user button. You'll notice that our display got a little more simple for a business user. And I've got a pick list here that, where I can actually pick my part 33030. So slightly better version of the paper map. But can you look at this and tell me my average price that I'm paying for this? No. 
So let's move the bar forward. Let's do a few button clicks. I don't have time in the demonstration, but I've already pre-built what would be a more nicely formatted version. So there are end user tools available today where you can take this transactional report and do things like put some formatting on it, maybe even put some subtotals. And I start to be able to more easily see which suppliers are providing these parts and how much I've paid to date, for example. However, this is still a paper map version. It's just a little bit prettier paper map version. Because again, the exact answer I need is what's the average I'm paying for this. And if anyone can look at this list and pick out the exact answer, what's my average? I'd happily give you a Starbucks gift card, but again, not possible. So now let's move to the GPS answer. With just a few more button clicks, the end user can turn the report into this. Now this is truly showing me my average because here I can see that this number represents of all the orders so far that I'm paying $804.82 for this part and with my conditional logic and formatting built by an end user, I can quickly see which suppliers are charging me more and which are supplying me less. Now this is the GPS answer because we've masked the complexity yet we've driven me directly to the answer. This is my ending point. Now, in the meantime remember another topic that the Aberdeen Group uh, research paper talks about the ability to drill in meaningful ways to answer the business question. So now that I see that century bit is shipping me more of this part than any other supplier and I see that they're charging me more than my average let's go see how reliable they are because if I'm paying them more certainly I would hope that they're giving me very good delivery performance so now I've drilled into what again this is a somewhat somewhat complex answer because to understand how late I am I have to know what was the committed delivery on the PO and then know the receipt date from my receipt system. And here I can see that this supplier has given me 100% of my deliveries late. So let's find out how late, how many days late were the deliveries. We'll just drill one more time. And I can see that all of my deliveries were late. Some of them were 15 days and some of them were 23. So my GPS version of the answer has highlighted at my fingertips that I've got some real issues around my suppliers potentially. And now I know where to go and start solving business problems. So that's example number one. But just before moving on to the next example, think about the concept of having one single reporting solution whenever possible to empower your business users. This all came from a single reporting solution, so we would highly advise that to make your upgrade successful, you want to put these kinds of business answers at the fingertips of your business users. Now, there's a big red company out there who is your supplier who would say that this kind of an answer could come from JD Edwards or their new user-driven reporting product. This report also could come from that. However, to calculate the average price per vendor and do these types of analytics would require a business intelligence solution. So that would be yet another reporting product. Then your ability to drill from that BI solution down to these meaningful details actually requires a whole bunch of extra work that isn't natively supported in any of the products. So now you're driving your users to multiple different places to get the answer. And as Aberdeen suggests, that adds to the complexity and to the negative impression of your upgrade. Okay, I want to move to the second example. Now in the interest of time, I'm not going to show you the paper map version of this report. I'm going to describe it to you. And then I'm going to show you how what we're seeing now is the GPS version. What we've done is with just a few end user button clicks, we've combined many different tables from JD Edwards, which include the AP invoices, the AP payments, the purchase orders table, as well as the receipts table. Now we've done this because the business answer we'd really like to understand is how is my payment performance relative to receipts and do I have any cases where I'm not paying? Am I paying when I don't receive or am I not paying when I do receive? So the paper version of this would be maybe an end user tool that allows you to build one report over your invoices table in AP, another report that builds over the payments table, another report that builds over the PO table, another report that builds over amount received, and you would get a listing. But again, you'd have to troll through your paper-based map and really have to uh, work a lot to work out what the answer is. So instead, with just a few extra button clicks, we've done the GPS version where we map the complexity that this report involves. And if you've ever tried to get this business answer out of J.D. Edwards, you'll know it's an extremely complex and difficult answer to get. But here in the GPS version of my information, I have this variance column. 
This shows me specifically only when I have a problem or I've received something and, and the payment is out of balance. So in this case, I can see for this given supplier, IT Solutions, that I have $750 out of balance. Now, furthering our example of the power of drilling, let's go down and understand what's going on with these payments and find out specifically what payments are past due. And now in this more detailed version of the same report, I can see that I am past due by this many days, and I can see that these two rows balance out in payment versus receipt. However, here I am still sitting open. So now I know that I have not paid payment number 6516, and that is what's causing my out of balance condition. So again, kind of the old fashioned way of doing this in JD Edwards land would maybe be to build four or five different reports, possibly dump out to Excel, try and manipulate that answer. The GPS version is putting the power at the fingertips of business users who can rapidly pull that information together and the GPS points directly to what the problem is. All right, I'd like to move on to one final example. This final example is a financial report, but not a financial report merely for the purposes of finance, but for empowering your entire business user community. So what we're looking at here is a global consolidated income statement that in this case represents my four different companies spread globally. Now this could be companies that are on separate JD Edwards instances all consolidated together or companies all sitting on a single JD Edwards instance all consolidated together. Now first of all on the subject of not driving your end users to multiple reporting products there are some out there who would recommend to get this kind of report you use a product like Hyperion that specializes in consolidated reporting. But again, that's one more place end users have to be trained to go. And then the other difficulty with a product like that, because it doesn't have access to the real-time information, you have difficulty drilling down to the supporting information. So here again, what we're looking at is the GPS version of the answer. What we have is this highly consolidated report looking at my real-time data, as opposed to just a mere old-fashioned map listing of a bunch of GL transactions. Now we've also used conditional formatting to highlight where things are going wrong and right. So first of all, as a business user, maybe I only care about one company, so I'm going to filter down to just company three. So this is still a highly consolidated report, but now only for all of the business units in my company. And the GPS allows me to get right down to the answers I want. Maybe today, although I can see I have some things to work on in my cost of sales since it's red, I want to focus today on revenue, so I can drill further and further into my revenue live on screen. This is real-time data, and now I can see that my product revenues are really trending in the right direction. And so actually for today's purposes, I'd like to get some further understanding to that. So I'm going to go look at my six-month revenue forecast. So again, the end user has the GPS directing them to the meaningful answer. Here again is another highly consolidated report that some would say to go to a third party system for, but we're advocating do all of this within one single system to further empower your business users, give them one system to understand. In this consolidated view, I've rolled up all of my revenue by business unit in JD Edwards so that I can see where the real good revenue is coming from and I can see that I've got some very high anomalies that although they're positive I might want to drill into and understand what is the San Francisco branch doing so well to drive this kind of revenue and is there a way I can repeat it in my business. The next logical question might be who are my customers driving this revenue that I see projected? So I may want to take a drill and just take a look at who are my top 10 revenue contributing customers in company three. So what these three different examples have shown is first of all the real power of complete drill down capability. And again, this is really only possible if all of these answers are coming to me from a single solution. Next, we've seen the sophisticated combinations of information that are actually being provided in what seems like a simple form to the business user, again, much like a GPS, directing me to the meaningful answer and allowing me to not have to worry about how complex the underlying data is. We really also saw how we can provide easy access to the exact information required, not just giving a listing of transactions where I then have to further work to find my answer, possibly having to send it off to Excel, building uh, pivot tables, etc., but really getting the exact information I need from the solution itself. And finally, the example of how we can really get these kinds of sophisticated answers through just a single reporting product 
and how much more powerful that is than having a stack of reporting products of say three or four different kinds of places that business users have to go. So let's summarize everything that we've discussed here. What does success look like? Very simply, I'm leveraging a quote from one of our customers. By putting this kind of information directly at the people's fingertips and really enabling those business users with the precise types of information they need, they say they have a unison between IT and the business and efficiency has gone through the roof at their company. So how do you move into getting this type of solution? Well, first of all, whenever you're looking at a reporting product, we would recommend, as would other large entities, involve your end users in the selection process. Don't merely buy a reporting solution from a sexy demo. Let your end users actually play with the software before you buy it. There are an increasing amount of software products that you can install very quickly and painlessly without having to pay. And then you can trial the actual software in your environment with your users to really ensure that once you go live, you've really met their expectations. So what's next? We have two more seminars in this series. The next one will get into some more details around solving some of the hard reporting requirements, things like custom tables, data outside the ERP, and more information on uh, global consolidations when your data lives on different instances, for example. In the third part of the series, we're going to focus a lot on user adoption and really helping to ensure that by the time you go live, the users are thanking you for the go live and are ecstatic with the solution that they're receiving. And now we'd like to open it up for questions. We have our first one. This is from Suresh, who says, our upgrade is already has enough going on. Are you suggesting that we add another reporting software product to the mix? It's a very fair question. So first of all, in our opinion, reporting is always part of an upgrade. So whether you're merely migrating your current reports in the same tool, or whether you're looking to add more reporting visibility to your end users, it's always a part of your upgrade or implementation. And research shows that reporting is actually one of the most important success factors from the perspective of your business users. So we would say that some upgrades suffer from not enough strategic focus on the reporting itself. And using reporting products like ours, which can be implemented very rapidly within just a couple of hours, then enable end users to create their reports very rapidly without tying up any of your developers can actually save time and make your upgrade more effective. In fact, we have a customer on record who states that our product saved between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars on their upgrade project and was the most significant thing contributing to the success of their go live from their user's perspective. So we would encourage you to seek out these types of products and indeed make it a part of your upgrade. Next question is from Karen. Are the complex reports that you showed based on a data warehouse and how long would be the implementation for this kind of a solution? So I'm not sure if I made the point strong enough. Everything that I was showing, of course, happened to be in our product, but that was all done in real time with stuff that would be set up by business users. It would take minutes, half hours, that kind of time to set up anything that I showed. So there is no data warehouse, there is no big implementation, and that we have competitors in the space that also provide this kind of thing without a data warehouse. Looks like now we have uh, Tom asking, do we support Enterprise One version 9.0? And Robin asking, do we support Enterprise One version 8.9? The answer is yes to both. Our product supports all supported versions of JD Edwards. So in Enterprise One, all the way from XE up to 9.1, and all world versions as well. And now Tom is asking, can you access tables outside of JDE, so outside of the JD Edwards database? And yes, we do have a tool set uh, which can be licensed within our product that allows you to join data from tables outside of JD Edwards and combine them in a way that for the end user experience, it feels like all the data is coming from one single place. It all runs in real time, no need for a data warehouse. Any more questions coming in? Oh, here we go. We have one from John. He says, you talk about the limitations of transactional reporting. Are you referring to the new JD Edwards end user reporting product? Um, and are you saying it has these limitations? So uh, trying to keep brand names out of this, but indeed, uh, as most of you probably know, JD Edwards has released in their latest version of JD Edwards an end user reporting product. It definitely adds the capability for users to create their own reports, format them, 
and I think definitely moves the bar forward compared to anything previously available in JD Edwards. However, indeed, it is just transactional reporting. So you can get a nice formatted list of stuff, and you can manipulate that list in ways you didn't used to be able to. But to get the kinds of reporting that I was showing today, you would need the full stack of Oracle reporting from Hyperion, etc. Yeah, next question coming in. This is from Bob. Is it realistic to ask a vendor to provide their software at no charge on a trial basis? Well, we're a little biased because we always encourage our prospective clients to install us and let their end users use us over their real data. That way you don't have to wonder if we're really answering all those very important business questions. But I will also tell you that a growing number of vendors in our space enable you to do the same thing. And certainly, we see that this is a, a huge value in your ability to ensure that you deliver what the end users are looking for. I was just reading an article about BI that talked about how some of the bigger vendors in that space, including BI and reporting, have intentionally manipulated the situation over time to make pre-purchase trials seem unattainable. And what that article suggests is that you seek out the vendors that allow you to look at the software first because a sexy demo never really tells you whether or not it's going to meet the needs of your users. And it looks like uh, we're about out of time. I don't see any more questions coming in. So I'll turn it back over to you, Heather. This concludes the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Please stay tuned for the follow-up sessions in this series. To learn more, visit insightsoftware.com forward slash webinars.